bottom of the clan. That's all right. I'm here just to record. Not going to stay here for long, but it's a pretty awesome clan. That's all I have to say. Very welcoming. And it was just fun staying there. All right, so this is the first Hoggider video. It is an attack by Aladdin666 from King's Landing, so the clan I'm camping at. And uh, he's pretty much baiting the clan castle troops right now and the heroes. So pretty typical. Um, I see a lot of players in this clan doing it. I'm not sure if it's all the top players or if it's just clan based, but you see a lot of really, really, really good strategies of baiting the clan castle, which I actually did not know about, and now I do. It's very helpful. So they do have level six wizards in the clan castle, which is actually actually very difficult to usually um, go against but we have more wizards back here and um, that's really gonna help get those clan castle troops uh, so the level 40 heroes are out and there go the hog riders two lines uh, you either do one line or two lines in this case we're seeing two lines we're gonna attack from the bottom right hand side and we're gonna have two groups of uh, hog riders go around there's a giant bomb man that's like a fully upgraded I believe level 4 giant bomb and and the hog riders were just too fast for that bomb to even hit them. Now they're towards the center, so that's good. That's a good thing for the attacker. We got Exbo's going down. Next, it's going to be Inferno and the last low four Exbo. Pretty much that bottom side will be defenseless, so it'll be pretty easy to attack from that. But we still have some cannons. We have some wizard towers, which are really not the big deal to the queen and the king, but definitely the archer towers and the cannons I see a lot of times. That's kind of the um, the deal breaker in most of these raids. Now the cool thing um, Aladdin is doing here is deploying minions to check for bombs, and there's one. There was a previous one before. I believe he's got all the bombs deployed now and triggered at the bottom uh, section, so he's going to deploy just two more minions, and I believe he's going to deploy a little bit more after, but uh, you really don't need any more. He still has 40 seconds to go. He's already got one star. You can see that the Barbarian King, he's going to get the Dark Elixir storage, and then he's definitely going to go for the Town Hall. There is a Wizard there as well. Town Hall doesn't have much health left, and a level 40 Barbarian King sure does enough damage to the Town Hall. And there we go. We have two stars, 59%. So now the last 20 seconds, I'm going to speed this up because all we're going to see is some minions go around, get just a little bit more buildings, more percentage. And this is going to be a 63%er. Wow, two trophies, guys. That's it. That's it. That's all you get up here in Champions League when you're this high in trophy counts. Um, and I do have a really, really sweet raid at the end, so stick around. This is a long video, but I'm doing a long one because I haven't uploaded yesterday, and I want to do a longer one today since I missed an upload. All right, so here's the next Hoggerider. I believe we have three Hoggerider battles today. So after the next raid, we will have some uh, mix. All right, so once again, we're baiting the clan castle. This time we have not only the level six wizards, but we have the witch. Um, I think there's one witch. It looks like there's like, no, that must be two witches, maybe one witch. Um, anyways, it doesn't matter. The thing with witches, they have the skeletons up in front of them, and that works really, really good against most armies. But if you're smart enough, you can, you can, if you're smart enough, you can definitely kill those skeletons and then kill the rest of the troops. It is hard though, because the witch stays behind and just deploys skeletons up in front to pretty much be the meat shield. All right, so. And, and we will have a witch raid in this one as well, and you see guys what I mean by uh, skeletons acting as a meat shield. Alright, so all the clan castle troops have been baited out, they're now dead, and we're going to start this massive, massive hogger attack. And now the giant bomb went off, and it kind of brought down the hog health, all of them by the way, to about halfway. So it's very lucky that these hog riders are maxed level 5 hog riders, and that really, really helped. Because if they were level 1, level 2, they probably wouldn't have a shot at it, so... All about the hog rider strategies, not only the quantity, but also the quality, as uh, most of the time with all the rest of the stuff. Anyways, it looks like the top section is really, really destroyed, and this center is just packed with defenses. So realistically, it was really easy for the hog riders to just go right around. You really need only one or two uh, healing spells for that center, and that's pretty much what happened there. Um... All right, so it looks like the Hoggers are dead. We do have this entire bottom section that hasn't really been touched, but that doesn't matter because the Town Hall, there's just not a defense that can have such a radius that will reach the Town Hall. So no matter what troop comes up to that Town Hall, it will still go down as long as we have enough time. And we do have one minute left, but um, it will be very interesting. There's that one wizard right there that will be for sure working on the Town Hall. And we'll see if that will be enough because it looks like... The Archer Queen will go around the base, probably will get shut down by a cannon, probably not the Mortar, she's below 30, it's kind of hard to um, 
I don't even think in three minutes the mortar will will be able to get her. So she's gonna die to something else. Um, and of course, there goes the town hall, 74%, 76 Anyways, we're just going up and up and up. Looks like we're going to get cut at 80%. That's once against two stars, and that's nice. 27 trophies. Very nice. Alrighty, so here is the next raid. Now, this is a defense. This is a defense by Dangerous Ground. Yet another member of King's Landing. I don't know how to say the attacker's name. I'm sorry. It's in Chinese, Japanese, maybe Korean. I don't, I don't know. Um... And he is from Clan Mega, all right? So, let's see. Um, what's interesting about this base is it's, it's the Crab Claws, all right? It's, it wants you to bait on the bottom, and usually that doesn't work. Um, you should attack from the top. And uh, the other interesting thing about the base is it's turned. Usually you have the Crab Claws facing directly to you, right? This one's facing over to the right-hand side. And I think that's actually a very smart tactic because most of the time, like when I attack, all I see is, faces, is bases with the Crab Claws facing me. When you see this, your mind actually gets a little bit confused, all right? Now, one thing I want to point out here, um, you see there's a few witches right there. Now, the witches, what they're used for is to bait the clan castle. We still, not, we still aren't in the range of it, but um, once they do get in there, Skeletons will definitely help because there will be one of those troops that keep respawning and they keep baiting the clan castle. Alright, so the clan castle is finally baited and some of the strong defenses are getting uh, kicked in. Looks like one of the golems is already split. The other one is getting trained on and there's a lot, a lot of defenses firing. We, are, we do have an opening to the center core, but now it gets really, really difficult. We have a lot of splash... Uh, damage going on. We still have two mortars, still have three wizard towers, and there's a bunch of long-range defenses. If you don't notice, it looks like that that more bottom left-hand um, exposed set to ground, so it's got a super long range, which is very good. But then the other two were set to air, and that's all right. It's kind of a smart strategy to have one of the exposed painted pointed, excuse me, to the ground. Um, you know, just as a long-range defense because sometimes um, it's going to be sad, but that 50% mark, your expo might be able to save it if the range of it is long enough. And uh, maybe I'll have a replay that I'll show you what I mean by that. It's kind of hard to just explain by words, but uh, maybe I'll find a replay. Anyways, this guy's stuck at 44%. No matter what side he's going to deploy a troop on, by the way, he has like less than 10 archers, less than 10 barbarians. Um, I don't know what he's trying to do right now. Honestly, he's just being desperate about it. It doesn't seem from my point of view that there's anything in the base that you can deploy enough troops to actually not have a defense fire at you. So that's going to be it right there. Three seconds left, 44%. No magic is going to happen. And that was not too close of a raid, but that's a win for uh, Dangerous Ground. Very nice. They get really excited when they win that many trophies because seriously, that high up in the trophy count, it's difficult to get. As you see, some people get two trophies, some people get 27. All right, so here's some mix going on. We got some balloons and minions. Woohoo. Some people uh, call this the BAM. All right. Attacking with the balloons and the minions. Balloons obviously up ahead for meat shield and taking down defenses. Minions right behind them. Uh, working in groups, taking out stuff, all that. Uh, and making sure that the if there are any air mines or any air seeking mines, that, they, uh, that the balloons take the damage, not the minions. Because... If you guys don't know, realistically, a level 1, level 2 air bomb can easily kill the whole group of minions. And uh, believe it or not, I saw that happen a bunch of times. The great thing right here is all the minions were face focusing on the town hall. And that really helped get that second star. Alright, so we haven't seen a 3 star battle today. But I'm assuring you we might see one, we might not. So stick till the ending. Um, I'm telling you, there's going to be a really nice raid towards the ending. Alright, so it's going to be 61%. Eight trophies, and we're moving on to the next raid. Okay, so let's see what this one is. This might be the um, the golem one. All right. Uh, yep, this is the go wipe, or maybe a combination of go wipe. Although we're using a lot, a lot of wizards. We're not using like four pekkas. We're just looks like using two. And wow, that was like a torrent of wall breakers. We're gonna break through all three layers of the walls. Very lucky for this guy. We're actually gonna have some like, like looks like two wall breakers just went right towards the town hall. Obviously, they're met by a lot of clan castle. Troops. The smart thing here is look at that. He throws the clan castle troops and then he let the other ones catch on and then he quickly drops the lightning spell and that takes out all of them. I've never actually seen this strategy, but man, these guys have some really, really nice strategies. I'm learning a lot of stuff from this clan, so that's really awesome. All right. Uh, wow, the town hall is already down. I have 
I'm not able to commentate fast enough uh, through the progression of this raid because this was just like a snap. Boom, 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 wall breakers, golems, pekkas, wizards, and we're already at two stars and 60%. Uh, at this point, unfortunately, you see the breaking, barbarian king walking around the base. There are defenses. They will be able to shoot him down because, well, even though he's level 40, he won't be able to break through the walls fast enough for those defenses not to take him down. Um, and there we go. That's going to be it. Looks like he actually ended the battle at 67%, two stars. Okay, and the next trade we have Stinger attacking this base. The base looks pretty nice. And he's going to use his Hog Riders to bait out the Clan Castle troops this time. Not the Witches, not anything else, just the Hog Riders. So not a bad strategy. Let's see how this goes. The interesting thing is the Clan Castle troops will first of all go over to the left-hand side. And then we're going to start back on the right hand side i believe this is just to bait the archer queen and just to get her activated and once she's activated no matter how far you deploy a troop from her she's going to start going towards it so now the troops are kind of going toward diagonally to the top which is where we're going to see the action that's where you know we might see some rage spells it depends how you want to do it you know not everybody uses lightning spells and there we go we do see a rage spell we see tankers, which are the heroes in this case, and two golems. So that's a very, very strong tank going inside. Now we just have to make sure that uh, the hog riders in this case are going to go towards the inside. We have huge sections, uh, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, the hog riders, I don't think jumping over the walls really takes a lot of time. So no matter how small or how big the sections you have, it still is uh, the hog riders are kind of... I would say overpowered still, even though they got their uh, at attack uh, hit points decreased by 5% or maybe it was their health, they're still pretty powerful. I still see them attacking bases. I still get attacked by them. In fact, my new base that I did a speed build a few days ago is getting uh, kind of destroyed by hog riders. Some of you, just a really quick mention here, said that my previous base was a good one and what is the reason that i redesigned it because you said that there was a lot of wins and stuff well there were a lot of wins and when i started getting towards really really close to 3,000 trophies i was at um 2965 i started losing to these hog Raiders and witch armies and i said you know what let's go ahead and go to clan in the dark and look what they're doing and there was a guy with 48 defensive wins I looked at his base and i kind of liked it so i said let's go ahead and redesign it and it works but you can't just rely on your base. It does loses at some point. In fact, I'm on my four losing streak right now. I'm not going to change the base. I'm going to keep it. All right. So there we go. We see two trophies. Not mu not many trophies, but still, um, it just shows how it, it just comes to this grinding halt when you're this high in the trophy count. Really, really hard to get trophies. So the next raid here might be a balloon. Yes, this is one of the balloon raids as well. Interesting base design. We see like these uh, double walls on the inside where I'm pretty sure there's bombs and spring traps maybe placed there. Although I'm not sure if that's effective at super high level gameplay like this. I mean, if a Pekka or a Golem walks over it, not much is going to happen. But if it's the Hog Riders on this base, maybe that's a, actually a very good strategy because if you think about it, they're not going to skip over the wall. They're going to go in between those. And then the spring traps will get activated, and each time three hog are going to go. So maybe this is actually a very nice anti hog base. I actually wouldn't be surprised if it won against hog attacks. But balloons, yeah, not not really. Doesn't look too great so far. All right, so the town hall is already down, and I believe the town hall went down because of all the balloons exploding around it. Because um, I don't see any barbarian kings that are by uh, cheat. Cheech MX. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but yeah, this is just uh, he calls this the farming army, all right, and, and this is the BAM army. A lot of people use balloons and minion combinations to farm gold and elixir. It is costly to dark elixir, but uh, it's it's actually a good strategy to farm, as well as you see trophy hunt works very well. Now he just plays his archer queen for the reason to get that dark elixir he's not going for extra percentage as you see he gets a nice almost 1000 dark elixir and just before those defenses start firing he's going to end the battle get 13 trophies two percent and 980 dark elixir okay so here is the next um let's see defender okay so this is a defense by king's landing it is big mike uh 1989 maybe that's his birthday i don't know uh, possibly, maybe it's just his favorite number, favorite year, but we're going to see how this goes. We do have maxed out heroes. We have a witch army, all right? So this is what Play Clash Clans, Patrick from Play Clash Clans likes to use. It is a pretty effective one. I'm kind of bad at it, so that's why I'm not going to use witches too many times. Uh, maybe if I really get good at it, I might, but I like the go wipe. The go wipe and the high guiders are my favorites, just because from the results I see. All right, so... 
Uh, using the jump spell is quite effective with the witches. You see, they're already in the center. Nice, they're getting funneled into that. Giant bomb went off. I don't think anybody was near that. Maybe a few skeletons, maybe one or two witches, but it's fine. Looks like we still have a bunch of witches on the field. And now we're working on the town hall. That town hall is going to go down really, really fast because there's just a lot of stuff going at it. And we're already 47%. There's going to be absolutely no problem getting 50. There we go. We got 50%. And you know what? With this base design, I think this guy has a pretty good shot at um, getting close to three stars, but not really. We'll see. Uh, this is this does look like an anti hog rider design and the reason is if you see all the defenses are really close to each other And that makes hog riders go around in a circle But as you see when the witches come out, obviously, it's not too great just like with my base When I see witches come out, it doesn't perform too well, but when I see the hog riders it definitely performs well Just like this base, but that's all right I mean like I said don't rely on your base up here in the trophy count to get you any trophies you just have to hope that you don't lose many stars. That's what it kind of for. Actually, there's a base out there that is made to only lose one star. I actually used it, but you do lose that one star each time because it's really easy to get 50%, but you just won't get the town hall and you will not get that second or third star for 100%. Okay, so we're at one minute right now. 70%. Um, we have four witches left. Not a good thing. Uh, as you see, the archer tower should start focusing on them. But the witches are doing actually somewhat of a good job deploying those skeletons up ahead. And they're just not getting to that. But it's got, it's going kind of slow. Alright. And at this point, let's see, we have a cannon, another cannon, an archer tower. And the skeletons are kind of dying off slowly, but they're dying off. And especially when they get to the walls, um, they're going to start grinding at it. And it's not going to work very well. Especially the wizard tower. Watch this. One hit, two hits, three hits. All right. Pretty much once they get up to that wizard tower, nothing good will happen. And the witches will finally get um, shut down by one of the archer towers. All right. Uh, well, looks like actually uh, we're just going to run out of time. Yep. Ran out of time. So that's 83%. Two star. That's all right. Uh, it happens. And uh, let's see what this is. Ooh, this is the special battle that I've been talking about. Let's see what happens here. It's a very, very cool base design. Looks like pretty well maxed. I don't see... Oh, well, the Archer Towers aren't maxed, but it looks like everything else is. And we're going to attack with the Hog Riders. Uh, Coco, he got really, really excited about this one. This is the first raid I've recorded and the best one I've seen so far. And I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy it. So let's see what happens here. I wasn't expecting too much from the Hog Riders doing, you know, much damage to this base. But man, oh man, they certainly did. Uh, this is one of the strategies where you use, I believe, the Lightning Spell. Um, let's see... I think he's trying to line up the clan castle troops. Maybe not. Maybe this is one of the rage spells. All right. Yeah, there we go. So this is the second raid I see using the rage spell. Um, pretty effective. Heroes go up in front. And wizards. That's right. Because wizards do splash damage. So once those clan castle troops clumple together, yeah, they're probably going to get taken down by one or two wizards. And there go the high graders. I don't think he deployed all of them. Just a little batch of them. And he does have... Uh, four more healing spells. So there goes the first one has a huge range almost gets the entire center circle But we're probably gonna see another one once we get over to this side in three two one There we go. Perfect um, Pretty much all the defenses are out here We're gonna see the clan castle and the town hall being the only buildings in there for quite a while Until the hog riders are done destroying the defenses. Let's see. We don't have many left. Let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten defenses left Maybe 12. All right. Doesn't really matter because he still got, um, I think, one more healing spell. And we're looking pretty good. Uh, as long as we don't get near that wizard tower, we don't need to use a healing spell. But once we do, we definitely need to deploy one. There we go. Uh, and as you see, after the wizard tower goes down, there's just the cannon and the archer tower. So nothing special. There's just too many hydras to go to do anything against that. Here goes the cannon. And the last defense, the Archer Tower. And then, really, guys, it depends on how much time you have left. We have 27 seconds. Let's see if we can do this. Um, here comes the Dark Elixir. Ooh, nice. 2003 Dark Elixir. Not bad. It doesn't refund the whole army of the Hog Riders, but definitely pays for it. All right, Gold Storage down. Uh, Dark Elixir drilled down. And now we just have this lonely Town Hall, and only the Hog Riders will enjoy heading down. There they go. 
And we have three, two, a one, and boom shakalaka, 100%.